Good morning all. In the previous couple of videos, we have been discussing the consolidation test, its readings, and how to get the coefficient of consolidation using the logarithm of time method and the square root of time method. Before that, we had discussed how to conduct the one-dimensional consolidation test in the laboratory, in which we said that the readings that we get from the laboratory is 2, the dial gates reading and the time taken. So from these two readings, the dial gates reading and the time taken, we discussed how to arrive at the coefficient of consolidation CV by root of time method and log of time method. Now we'll continue our discussion on a few observations from the consolidation test. Number one is a void ratio versus time. When you plot the void ratio of soil versus time taken, you'll have a plot like this, where you'll have an initial void ratio E0 or E0, which gets reduced over time and it attains what we call as an EF or E final corresponding to one load. So this particular plot is for a single load increment or a single stress. So when you take a look at this plot, you can see that there's an initial void ratio E0 and as time progresses, the void ratio decreases, which means the soil consolidates and it settles and it attains a final void ratio corresponding to one particular load increment. The next one is a dial gauge reading versus time plot. It's also quite similar to the previous one. You have the dial gauge reading here and you have the time here in the x-axis. So for clay, the plot may look like this and for sand, the plot may look like this, which means clay takes longer time and a higher magnitude of settlement or consolidation whereas sand you can't expect much of a consolidation in that particular kind of soil so this particular plot again is for a single load or a single stress increment dial gauge reading versus time so the decrease in thickness is rapid initially but slows down with time and the change in thickness with time becomes negligible usually after 24 hours in clay and in sand within a few hours as well for a particular load increment so clay may take 24 hours or even higher time to attain the state whereas sand it attains this state within a few hours now this plot signifies the rate of consolidation in the field or it, or in other words it signals the rate at which the soil settles in the field condition coming to the third observation the final void ratio versus the effective stress you have the effective stress sigma dash in the x-axis and the final void ratio ef in the y-axis and the plot the general friend look, looks like this and one thing that you need to take care of is that this plot is for a set of stresses or set of loads. It is not for a single load increment. It is for a set of loads. So EF corresponds to the void ratio after 24 hours of application of each load increment. And hence, the plot, this particular plot, has various E finals, one for each increment, plot against the corresponding stress for example if you take this particular point it will be for one load increment and there will be one final void ratio likewise you have a cluster of points in this in this graph which is joined by this line so the slope of this plot gives what we call as the coefficient of volume compressibility AV so AV is a slope of this plot and of course at each point it will have a different value and the coefficient of volume compressibility AV is a decrease in void ratio per unit increase in effective stress delta Y by delta X is the slope which means 
decrease in void ratio per unit increase in effective stress or mathematically it can be represented as AB equal to delta E by delta sigma dash with a negative sign. When effective stress increases, void ratio decreases. So you have a negative sign there. Its value is different at different effective stresses or at different points of this plot. So the magnitude of AV, as you can intuitively understand, decreases with an increase in effective stress. When you take slope of this curve, you can understand that towards the less left portion you will have a higher slope and as sigma dash increases or as effective stress increases the slope decreases or AV decreases which means the soil becomes stiff and hence the plot becomes flatter. The next plot or the next observation is the final void ratio versus logarithm of effective stress. In the previous graph we had seen that the plot was between sigma dash and EF. Here you have log sigma dash in the x-axis and EF in the y-axis. Once you take logarithm, the plot, the graph, which was curved in the previous slide, has now become a straight line. And again, this plot is for a set of load or a set of stresses. So this straight line of course will have a constant slope which is called as CC. So plotting final void ratio versus the logarithm of effective stress gives you a straight line the slope of which is called as compression index CC. So CC is delta Y by delta X or delta E by logarithm of sigma dash by sigma naught dash final by initial. So CC equal to negative delta E by log sigma dash by, del by sigma naught dash or the change in effective stress, the, I'm sorry, the change in void ratio by logarithm of the change in effective stress with a negative sign because as stress increases, void ratio decreases. I can rather represent this as negative delta E by log sigma naught dash plus delta sigma dash by sigma naught dash where sigma naught dash is the effective stress at the initial portion and delta sigma dash is a change that happened and delta e is a change in void ratio under the stress so the terms are marked here delta sigma dash is a change in effective stress and sigma naught dash as the initial effective stress. If you know the liquid limit of a soil sample, you can arrive at the value of CC or to be specific, you can estimate the value of CC. CC equal to 0 0.009 into liquid limit minus 10 for undisturbed clay and is equal to 0 0.007 multiplied by liquid limit minus 10 for remolded clay. So in short, when you know the liquid limit of a soil sample, you can arrive, you can estimate the CC. It need not be precise. The precise method is to get the slope of the E versus log sigma plot. Liquid limit, W, L, as in percentage, and, and the value of CC usually ranges from 0 0.075 to 0 0.3. The fourth observation that you can get from the laboratory is the coefficient of volume change. It is a volumetric strain per unit increase in effective stress. It is represented by MV, volumetric strain by unit increase in effective stress. So delta V by V naught divided by delta sigma dash. Again, it comes with a negative sign, which means that as effective stress increases, the volumetric strain decreases. So when you take the volume of solids is equal to 1 in the three phase system diagram, V is equal to 1, you can rather represent MV as delta E by 1 plus A naught by delta sigma dash. Volume can rather be represented as void ratio because Vs is equal to 1 
as explained in the initial portions of the three phase system definitions. So delta E by 1 plus E naught by delta sigma dash. And I can clip two terms together, delta E and delta sigma dash. So delta E by delta sigma dash is nothing but AV. So I can rather represent MV equal to minus AV by 1 plus E naught. So MV, the coefficient of volume change, decreases with increase in effective stress. E0 is the initial void ratio. Delta sigma dash is a change in effective stress and delta E is a change in void ratio under the stress.